Uh, all right, guys. Well, one, just excited to be back out here, right? Excited for the start of fall camp. Um, another season here. It, it's just been it's been outstanding. You know, it starts with really upstairs with the cohesion that we, you know, we've really developed on offense on, on, with our offensive staff. We've got a lot of continuity over the last couple of years. And then the guys who have added in, um, just it's been, a, it's been an unbelievable mix. A lot of guys bringing great thought, uh, great ideas, um, and, and just bringing so much to the table. And I think that carries over to the players, uh, the, the, the time that we have together as an offensive staff and how we, how we interact with each other. And then downstairs, right, and, and, and with our players and the interaction of our staff with them, and watching those guys work together and how hard they worked all, all off season um, to get ready for this moment. Uh, and we're challenging them, right? We're challenging them to do, uh, to push themselves harder than they ever pushed. We're challenging them to do new things and different things and different ways to attack defenses and, right? And, and having to respond to all the different things that Coach Baker's given us and our defensive uh, players. So it, it's, been, it's been fun few, uh, first few days. Really excited about the rest of camp, but it's a process, right? We got to stay one day at a time. We got to get better every single day. And right now our guys are understanding that process. Hey, Joe. Um, Mac Markway leaving. Can you kind of assess where your tight end room is right now and um, how you replace his skill set uh, with the guys you got in the room? You know, we have, uh, we have an unbelievable group in that room. Um, Coach Nagel is doing a great job with those guys. The improvement that, that uh, Mason Taylor's made going in from his second year to his third year this offseason and, and watching his progression in his, in his route running, um, really doing an unbelievable job with his base. And then as you watch the, the growth of Kamari Pimpton and, and the growth of Trey Des Green already, um, and we got other guys in that room, right? Giovanni Peterson, who's been on this program now, in this program now for, for a couple of years and just continuing to work with our process and get better um, and, you know, and make improvements. That group is one of the most exciting groups on our football team. So I can't say enough about where we're going with that, uh, with that room um, and how those guys are working together, how they're pushing each other. And we've seen a lot of growth in the first six practices. I expect to see the same thing over the next several. Hey, Coach. Uh, how you doing? Hey, Jock. Nice. You're repping the Rogaro. Uh, I am. Ronnie paid me a little on the side. Uh, as you build this offense around Garrett, can yep. you just speak to – it's nothing new, but just his ability to make every, every throw and yep. his arm strength and his ability to push the ball down the field? You know, Garrett's a high processor, right? He processes information really quickly. Um, and, and then he has the arm talent to get it to that place and the creativity, right? He, he's, he's able to do that. Um, the biggest thing for Garrett, right, and I think you guys have seen that, right? I mean, uh, the growth over the last several years um, and just being process oriented. Um, that's what I've been really proud of him. He's, he's been really focused on his process. Um, he's been focused on little things um, and allowing the big things to happen. Um, that's, that's been really the, the things that, that I've enjoyed watching him. And then I've watched him grow as a leader uh, this off season and and how he's really been able to let it happen naturally, right? And let his work speak for itself, but also be the vocal leader right when he needs to be. Um, you know, we're obviously going to do things that that allow him uh, to be successful. We're going to put him in positions, right, to use that arm, to use his decision making ability. Um, but you know, you're going to see a lot of the same things. And then, right, we're always going to build around our personnel. We're going to build around him. Right, and put him in position over time, right? What does he what is he successful with throughout August? What was he successful with in spring? Um, what do we feel like our other guys can do? Because it's not just him, but it, obviously it always is definitely what can the quarterback do the best, and, and we're going to put him in that position. Uh, but I think you're seeing our offense start to come together around him um, schematically. Hey, Coach, over here. I got two questions. Uh, starting with the first one, um, there's been a lot more sets involving two tight ends, and some of them have been out wide. Uh, what allows you to do those type of sets? We got all types of sets, right? You know what I mean? So everybody listening out there, we got everything. We got them all. Uh, you know, the more, as we recruit, right, when Coach Kelly got here, we want to recruit players that allow us to attack a defense in so many different ways. Um, I think you saw us last year, right? We had, we had a couple of really elite players on, on uh, the perimeter, and we were able to attack guys in certain ways, right? We're always going to build, though, as, as we continue to grow, um, and, I, you know, we started out talking about that room. If those guys give us an opportunity to do different things, we're going to use them, right? And we're going to put them in position to be successful. Um, you know, and obviously tight ends always are fun, right? They add, they add a different element to the offense, uh, especially when you have guys who can do multiple things. So it, it's been good to watch. Everybody's got to keep getting better. We're going to keep being, uh, being aggressive. We're going to be aggressive in the run game, right? We're going to attack people, um, and we're going to be aggressive on the perimeter. So, you know, if we need to do that, 
in, in multiple different sets with multiple different people, we're going to do that. And my second question is, you know, one of the things that stood out this fall camp has been the defense. Um, what, uh, how, what have you seen from an offense offensive perspective of how they've improved and also how does that help you prepare for the season? Well, you know, the thing is when we're out of practice, the better we play and the more things that we give our defense to defend, right, and vice versa, the better, right, the, the, the whole team rises, right? And that's what we want. We want that level of, uh, we want that level of competition every day at practice, right, where we're all pushing each other to get better. You know, I think Blake's package is, is – challenging in so many different ways. There's pressure looks from all over the place, but yet they can play a base defense, right? And they can challenge the line of scrimmage and get vertical. Um, they got a lot of different coverage uh, things in the back end. He makes it simple for our guys. So I think that what, I, what that allows is everything that he asks them to do, they can be physical, they can be violent, they can be aggressive, they can run to the football. Um, and I think you're seeing that, right? And you're, you're seeing that swagger, right, start to, uh, start to really show. Um, and it's been fun. It's been fun, right? And, and it's challenging, right? And we go out, and all of a sudden, hey, we win one, right? Hey, you know what? They win one. But we're just going to stick to our process, right, and keep challenging each other and keep uh, raising the level of play. But it's definitely been uh, exciting to watch and been challenging for our guys to have to pick up all the different things. Hey, Joe. Uh, what were some of the things that uh, Caleb Jackson needed to do in the offseason and through fall camp to be a more integral part of the offense? You know, when you watch, right, everybody saw last year, Caleb, um, when he was able to get the football, um, and especially once he broke the first level or second level, he's a punishing back. Uh, he is hard to tackle. He, he runs, he gets his pads down on contact, and he's able to drive his feet, and he's a powerful, powerful human. So really the big thing was the growth from being a freshman, right? Being a freshman, playing running back, there's so many different things to run back. It's not just get the ball and run. Um, there's, right, how is this run scheme fitting against – uh, the block, you know, against the defense that we're seeing, right, and where's the ball going to fit, and keeping my eyes up and understanding my, my read, right, and being able to hit the proper hole. It's, it's pass protection and being able to pick up whatever the defense gives me as we make checks. So all those different little things are the things that he's been able to attack in the offseason. You know, remember, he got here last summer. He wasn't an early enrollee, so everything happens so fast for those guys. And when you start getting in that box and having to uh, pass protect and, and having to understand different, you know, where different runs might fit, you know, that's a lot. So his talent was showing, right? Uh, but now I think what you're seeing is you're seeing how he as a complete running back, right, is going to start to come into his own. It, it's been fun to watch. I think he worked really hard from spring ball till now, right, on his body um, and being able and being prepared for what the season is going to be for the running back position. And I think all the guys did. I mean, you watch what Josh has done. He's just – he's such a professional. Um, he gives us such a, a sense of stability. Um, and he's a great player. You know, he's a great player. Uh, and then what John Emery's done coming back and, and, and working through working off an injury and how he's been locked in every day and showing up every day and staying in the moment has been awesome. And, and then Caden as a freshman um, has, is really far ahead of what, you know, freshmen usually are at that position. I think he shows a, an ability to make, make plays, ability to make runs, but also be able to play in the game, right, be able to play in the game. It's not just a, he's not just a talent. Right, he's already showing the ability to be a running back. So, it's it's a great room. It's been it's been fun to watch uh, Coach Wilson and Corday Hankton work with those guys. I think every single day they're challenging them, and the, the group of guys work really well together. Um, so it, it's been good to see. You know, today was the first day of tackling, right? So we'll get we'll get some more opportunities, I'm sure. Uh, you know, in the future, and continuing to see those guys get an opportunity to make those plays, right, when they have to be tackled, and and now all of a sudden that adds a different element, right, to practice. Joe, um, <clears throat> along the same vein, the offensive line, what kind of luxury, I guess, is the right word, maybe, I don't know, to have that much experience, what does it allow you to do in the run game? How diversified can you make this offense? How much do you listen to them? And then, um, if I can, just you're using the handset yeah. at, at practice. How is, what's the evolution of that? So, one, our offensive line, I think, has been talked about probably as much as anything throughout this offseason, and rightfully so. There's some special guys up there. Um, who have played in a lot of games and seen a lot of different things. I think Coach Davis has done a fa just a fabulous job of creating a standard in that room and creating it through players, right, where, where it's, a, it's a standard that's developed through the players in that room, and they're the ones that are leading it. And that's when you have a special group. 
And that's what we've seen. And obviously, Will and Emory, you know, and Emory and Will get, get spoken about so much, but, but Miles, right? And, and Delhi. And then how DJ, as a young guy, has stepped in and just the consistency and accountability that he has and the work ethic. Um, and then to the second group right now, you know, all, all those guys and the stand, you can see the standard of the first group pulling, right? Pulling those younger guys. And that, and that that's what's exciting, right? That's how you build a culture in a room. Um, but, you know, I, I said the other day uh, to some, somebody asked me a similar question, and I said the same thing. We're going to use our playmakers to make plays, right? And if, if our offensive line has the ability, right, to understand what they're seeing, process that information, and attack it, right, physically and violently, right, and we can put them in different situations to be successful and use their ability, right, to learn, be physical, and to run, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Um, and, and I think that's where, you know, a lot, a lot of times as it, when you're building an offense or when you're calling plays, you, you have to be, you have to think about, hey, I got to, I got to, ooh, I need to protect this guy or I need to protect that guy or, hey, you know what, that might be too much for us. Um, and I think we've been able to challenge them so that we can attack people in a lot of different ways and make sure we can put the ball in the belly of the back a little bit. Um, you know, so that's, that's been fun. And obviously that carries over to pass pro too. Um, so it, it's, it's definitely been something we challenged them with this offseason, and I think they've, they've rose to the occasion and more. And, and the headset, yeah. The headset, well, yeah, it allows me to talk, right, which probably, you know, sometimes I, is uh, – but that's all right. I get to yell sometimes too, you know, right? When they do this with their helmet, that's good, right? Uh, no, the, the, the microphone, you know, in the game adds – it just adds a different dimension – Right, and I think you're going to see people use it in a lot of different ways, um, and use it creatively, use it to attack the defense operationally, um, and we're absolutely going to do that. Right, we're absolutely going to do that. You still got to let the guys go play. Right, we're not we're not in there telling, oh, hey, throw it here or throw it there or anything like that. Right, I don't want to do that. They they need to go play quarterback. What we're going to use it for is is to where we can attack people in different ways at different tempos, and and you, and, you know use that. Right, use it to our benefit, um, and we've thought about some different creative ways and talked to some different people. Obviously, the NFL has been doing this right for several years. Their game's a little bit different than ours, um, but I think you're seeing some different guys across college football have some good ideas, and we'll definitely do that. And it, there'll be an evolution to it, right? There'll be an evolution to it, but it definitely simplifies and it allows it allows your quarterback, I think, to just hear the play a lot earlier than having to wait for the signal. That that's been a huge benefit. You're over here. Uh, some changes on offense, uh, communication with the helmet. Uh, if it uh, doesn't get in within 15 seconds, what's plan B? Secondly, yep. uh, iPads uh, and tablets on the sidelines. And then thirdly, uh, two-minute warning before and uh, the first half and the end of the game. Strategy, how does that change because of those rules? Yeah, so one, with, with the helmet, right, with anything, right, with anything that you're using, you, also, you always have to have a plan, then you have to have contingency plans, right? J just as anything in football, right? Hey, uh, we got to have contingency plans for injuries. we got to have contingency plans for, um, you know, whatever might happen or whatever might come up. So now that the earpiece is, is something, we have to have a contingency plan for that not happening. So we'll do periods throughout camp where we say, hey, headset's down for four plays, right? And now the quarterback's back out there on an island. The positive thing about Garrett uh, – Right, being our quarterback is he's played a lot of football and been here for a long time. So he's been in college and he's been used to getting plays in that in, in that manner. Right. So for him, it won't be a, a massive adjustment. But you know, it's still, right? I mean, you get used to hearing in your ear and it changes, right? And we, we have to be prepared for that and we will. Right? We will, but it's it's uh, it's just another contingency plan we got we have to attack. The iPads on the sideline, I, I think is awesome. I think what it does for us is Hey, hey, we think we just saw something, and we don't have to go. We don't have to. Hey, Deli, Deli, was that guy a G or was he a shade? Right? He was a three. What, what, what? You know what? What'd you see? We get to see it. So there's no. It, it eliminates the con, some of that conversation of of confirmation of what were the very minor nuances of what might have been going on, especially in the box, right? In in the in the tackle box. Um, so we'll use it a lot for that to make sure we're correct there and make our corrections. But our corrections are going to be the same, the same way that we were correcting and coaching on the sideline. Because game day is about our guys going to play, right? And, and we, don't want to, we don't want to create anxiety, right, or, or the old paralysis by analysis 
uh, type of situation on the sideline. They, that's go play, man. You've worked, you've prepared all week, go play. So we're going to use it for confirmation of, hey, what we're saying, but we're not going it, to, it's not going to be a meeting. We're not going to go, you know, cut on the film room right, and, and, and create that type of environment. We're going to absolutely create the game day environment and, and make sure that their physicality and their aggression and their attack mindset stays in place. Uh, what was your third question? Two minutes, before half. Two minutes before half. You know what? Here's the great part. Coach Kelly, he gets he's he's awesome at that stuff. So I let him figure that out, and I just figure out my stuff. But it would definitely add an element, right? You you're gonna plan for it. The analytics are gonna change. We're a big, um, as as you guys have heard, right? Over time, right? Unless we have somebody new in here. Uh, Coach Kelly's very data-based within our organization, right? We're very development-oriented, right? We use that from a development standpoint on our player side, right? We also use analytics, right, in terms of in-game. Um, so we're going to continue to do that. And the analytics will change on when you may use timeouts, how you may try to uh, um, control the ball or whatever that might be in that moment. Um, and, and we will absolutely, right? We're, we're going to use our brains and we're going to make sure we, we use that to our advantage and make sure that it doesn't get used against us. Um, but definitely it will, it will adjust the timeout situation. There's no doubt about it. Coach, you touched on Garrett Nussmeyer a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. He is accredited a lot of his returning to LSU because of you and said that you were very honest and open with him. How was that conversation for you and just y'all's relationship and the growth that you've seen from him? You know, the quarterback position. So when I, when I uh, first was in coaching, I coached receivers um, for, for several years. And when I was coaching receivers, you get an opportunity within the room to create a, a, a room dynamic, and so many guys get to play, right? So it's a lot more about a little bit of what I was talking about with Brad Davis, right, or what Cort Cortez Hankton does with his group and, and just the dynamic of that, that unity together because multiple guys are out there at a time, um, right, and, and you're building that. The difference in quarterback is you create that unity, right, and that and that comfortability within the room. But at the same point in time, there's usually only one guy that gets to play. The other guys have to be prepared, right? But it's a it's a little bit of a different role. Um, what I've found uh, through mistakes in my past, right, that 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 I learned from, is honesty and straightforwardness is the best is the best way, right? And and. That's what we're always going to do within this program. Coach Kelly challenges us. He, he, that's what he's all about, right? And we're going to be honest with our players, tell them exactly where they're at, and we're going to give them the tools to where that they can develop and grow, right? And then we're going to motivate them and challenge them and hold them to a standard to do that. You know, the, coaching's about relationships um, and trust. And, you know, Garrett and my, and my conversation back and forth and Coach Kelly's conversation with him and, and throughout our organization, uh, we're honest with where he was excited about the, the talent and potential that he has and who he is as a player. And, and he, I'm, I'm assuming he felt himself getting better, right? And he said, as I'm getting better and I got an opportunity. I think you've heard it. You know, I think, I think this place means a lot to him. Um, his, his teammates mean a lot to him. And, and, you know, that was important to him. So I, I'm proud of him for that fact and, and proud of how he's worked and I'm excited for him. And, but I'll say this. The, the, the camarader to, to add on to that, the camaraderie within that room and um, the way those guys have worked together and the way, the way Ricky's working um, and the growth he's had, the way AJ's worked, the growth he's had, the things that we challenged them with after spring, um, you're continuing to see them elevate. Uh, you know, and Colin Hurley with his talent and, and his intelligence and, and ability to, to see things and make decisions, you know, he, he showed, showed a lot throughout, you know, his early time here of, of – really some, some things for us to be really, really excited about. So I'm proud of all of them uh, and proud of the way that group uh, has worked together. But that's a good question, and, and you know, it's definitely unique, and, and uh, his story is different than maybe some others in college football today. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, Wilson. Hey, Joe. With this revamped run game that you all are, uh, you know, have this year, was it a matter of just, like, taking things out of the playbook and kind of dusting stuff off that was already there? Or did you kind of have to really design some things that you all hadn't had over the last couple of years? And if so, was there anywhere that you looked for inspiration for that? You know, one, I mean, we had – Right, our playbook has been big since we got here. We can call every play. If you see a play on TV, we could have called it. You know what I mean in our terminology, right? So um, our offense had had a lot of a lot of ability to adjust to to what we wanted to do. Um, so right, we 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 had done some of those things in the past, but maybe within game, right? What what some of you guys may have seen? Um, hey, you felt like we were we were leaning more towards you know one or two schemes or whatever that might have been. 
Um, so no, we, we had a lot of those things. You know, I think different sets and, you know, you see different ideas and you say, hey, that matches what we do. And, you know, and, and you try to build around what you feel like you need, right, to attack a defense. Hey, we need the ability to run the ball vertically. We need the ability to get the ball on the perimeter. We need the ability to attack people in man. We need the ability to push the ball down the field. We need the ability to get the ball right outside, whatever that might be. And then how are we going to do that, right, within our offense? And we had a lot of it there. I think it's everything is about um, – creating the package that fits us. And, you know, and then we'll, we'll attack the defenses that we're going to see, you know, in different kind of ways, right? Obviously, you know, with Coach Baker's defense, we're seeing certain things, right? So, so we'll lean more towards whatever that might be. But we're, we're going to be able to do whatever we need to do to attack the defense, but yet allow our players to understand what we're doing, right? And be ready to go uh, execute whatever they might see. You know, but the great part is it's not just me by any means, our offensive staff, the guys in that room, we have the best offensive staff in the country. We have the best offensive staff in the country. And the ideas that they bring to the table um, and the professionalism at which they do and, and where they bring ideas maybe from their past or maybe from something that we see. Um, and then the, the decision making, right, on, on what, what fits us the best, right, and making sure that we let our guys practice that so no matter what they see, they can execute. That, that's, the, uh, that's the thing. Uh, Jack, you good? we're going back, it's circling around. Let's go. This better be good. It's the last one. Yep. I'm oh, just kidding, like Jack. Yeah, you. you're good. Don't listen um, to him. Don't get distracted. So, uh, Coach Kelly was talking about the wide receivers. Yes, and, they're really good. Uh, he said Kyron and uh, CJ and Chris were really – those three were really kind of setting the example out in front. Uh, what do you see out of those guys and the, the whole core? You know, well, I'll say this too, though. The level – from maybe guys that you haven't talked about, you see elevating. Um, you know, we've had some guys deal, you know, whatever, whatever might, might be. But the guys, when, when I look at Aaron Anderson and Kyle Parker and the way that they're elevating throughout camp, um, you know, Shelton Sampson showed a lot of growth at, at some of his different opportunities, right? And, and, you know, we've talked about Xavion and we talked about all those different guys, but I think there's more than just those three who have been doing and flashing in, a, in different ways. Uh, really excited about, you know, our couple young guys and where they can go. But Kyron, Chris, and CJ have played a lot of football. Uh, and, you know, I think they're definitely showing it. And, and what they've done is when they have an opportunity to make plays, we've tried to put them in position to do that. Um, and when they've had that opportunity, I think you've seen all three of them um, kind of rise to the occasion. We'll try to put them in situations where they, you know, where they can succeed. Um, but I think we're definitely going to, you know, we're going to move them around and, and we're going to be able to attack people in, in different ways. And I think you, you've seen that in our past, so that won't change. But I've been really proud of how hard that they've worked. But their work didn't start, you know, a few days ago. Their work started long ago. The, the consistency uh, at which Kyron's been carrying himself, um, the growth and maturity, just just an unbelievable story, right? And and Chris Hilton and everything that he's dealt with in, in his past from an injury standpoint and the, the, the really complete receiver that he's become, I think you guys saw it in spring, right? Uh, a bunch of stuff that, that he's able to do. Can't be more excited about him and what he brings to the table. You know, he's, he's, he's special, man. He's, del he's elite. And, and then CJ, the, the consistency and the understanding and the knowledge of the game and all the different things that he's able to do as a receiver it's definitely a fun, th fun three guys, but I think it goes much deeper than those three. Um, just excited about that room, excited about the camaraderie they have and how they push each other and how they work, right? And I think you're seeing the level of physicality right in that room continue to elevate.